Every season is spooky season in our book. So settle in and prepare to be shook. Shut up. You are listening to Shook, a comedic podcast about all things paranormal and unexplained. I'm Santa. Hey, friends. I'm Amanda. How the heck are you guys? It's been 84 years. Yeah, I guess we're back. Happy Shocktober. Yeah, we're back if you even care. So I'm Santa. And fun fact, I have a lot that has taken place and most of it was not fun. Amanda, do you have any fun facts? Yes, I'm going to HIPAA violate myself. Is that a thing? <laughs> if you tell a friend, if you share this episode with a friend, did you just commit a HIPAA violation? Because I was part of the Listeria outbreak. I ate me a Cuban sandwich from Bull's Head Deli Meat. And for three weeks, I had some very unpleasant ailments. And that's all I'm going to say, because I don't want anybody to be grossed out. Um, but yeah, that didn't help our hiatus. But TBH, like Santa's like a champion. That's all I'm going to say. We'll talk about it more on Patreon. But like we went through heck this summer. We went through hell. It was a cruel summer, dare I say. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, if you're on the Patreon, you do know. But for those of you who don't know, started out with a kiss. No, uh, it started out with some like haunting stuff happening at the house that I was living oh, in. Oh, yeah. So I was having some insane electrical issues. Basically all, every single light in my house was flickering. And there's a lot of videos on the Patreon. If you go over there, you can see a bunch of the videos of like all the lights flickering in my house at random times. And it was definitely what we would call a tower moment uh, for me. I feel like just that whole situation. And I guess you could say I'm still kind of in that but I feel like I'm sort of like on my way out of it now that's why on my end I'm able to be here is that we're sort of on the uh, we're on our way out of the tower moment we're on our way out of the death and into the rebirth the rebirth yes yeah so stay yes. tuned for that once that happens it's over for you hoes <laughs> basically Santa's having a come up okay yeah and it's a really slow and gradual one basically I hit rock bottom all the other times that I thought I hit rock bottom no anyways it's starting to get better and so now we're here and like I said details will be on Patreon yeah so head on over to Patreon so you can hear Santa's exclusive tea because we did get several DMs asking when are you coming back well if you want to know, head on to Patreon, sign up as a free member, and you can hear all of the juicy tea that we have to uh, spill over there. But also, the major fun fact is we are back, and this is our first Shocktober ever, or any episode ever, where we're together in person. So hopefully the audio sounds okay, because we haven't done this before. Every time you've seen us record before has been remote via Riverside. So yeah, yeah. But we're really excited. Last night, we actually had our, our very first Shocktober Live. So if you were there for that, thank you so much for coming to join us. I know Katya, Cass, Jessica, several other people came on, and we had a great time. And on that note, Santa, should we tell everybody who we're wearing this evening? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So the reason why we're wearing these awesome T-shirts is because our lovely listener, Katya, who spoils the shit out of us, sent us a boo box, okay? She sent us a boo box. And in a minute, I'm going to go get that boo box because I know we've already done an unboxing on our live stream, but I kind of just really want to show off the items in the boo box because so cool. Anyway, she personalized the boo box to me and to Amanda, and we each got so many cool things. I got this really awesome Blairstown Diner t-shirt. Apparently, this is where they filmed Friday the 13th. So, yeah, y'all know how I feel about Friday the 13th. Love your shirt. It's very fitting for you. And mine is very fitting for me because you know I love Scream. It's my favorite franchise. Katya was so kind to get me this Woodsboro Scream t-shirt, and I'm obsessed with it. And Santa and I just both happen to have little lacy undershirts, so 
we decided to just put them on over the lace to give you a little little gothic chic. Also, it's really cold in my apartment. It's cold. That, that's the real that's the real answer. It's not for fashion, it's for comfort. We're really cold. And <laughs> now I'm gonna go get the boo box so I can show the other stuff. Okay, so I went to get the boo box and clearly this is the boo box. So I'm not gonna move too much because it makes a lot of noise. But look at all of the stickers. It's very magical. It's a very, very magical experience. And so Katya got each of us the cutest little ghosty mugs. Yes. And then what else did she get us, Amanda? Something I'm obsessed with, dare I say. These cute little books. One for Tennessee and one for Georgia. A haunted ghost tour in Georgia. And it's got the big chicken. If you're from Atlanta, you know the big chicken. And Marietta, the big chicken. Lighthouses galore. Like the Georgia Aquarium. I mean, come on. This is literally the cutest. Look, the Tennessee Aquarium is on this. She sent us personalized cards with just beautiful messages for each of us. And yeah, Katya is constantly spoiling us, honestly. And I don't know what we did to deserve this, but we love you, Katya. Me too. And we look forward to any way that we can possibly spoil you in return. Get ready to get spoiled. Katya, for real, honestly, you're so sweet. We love you. It was so great to meet you in Oregon at the Oregon Ghost Conference. I hope we get to do that again sometime. But yeah, I think I think Katya said she got a lot of these items in Mystic, Connecticut, which is so cool. I would love to visit Connecticut one day, but for real... Katya, you're such a sweet baby angel. We love you. And thank you for texting us and keeping in touch and checking on everything, seeing how we were doing. I know we both really appreciated that for different reasons, but thanks to Katya and everybody else who reached out while we were gone. We tried to keep you as updated and informed as we could throughout everything that's been going on, which you can learn about on Patreon. You know what they say? under promise and over deliver not the opposite and yeah. i was i didn't want to be like hey we're coming back you know on xyz date so i was just like trying to keep the messaging pretty vague but like informative as we could but yeah, yeah. but we're here we're here and we're here for now uh lord knows that 2024 has been something else one of the worst years of my life and with that if you're new here if this is your first shocktober this is our third one believe it or not We're fashionably late for our uh, two-year anniversary party, so that's kind of what this is. August 3rd was our two-year officially. For Shocktober, we do a common theme, and this time we're doing haunted restaurants and bars. Yeah. We're just going to talk about a couple of ones that are near and dear For example, like, do you want to just like hop right into like the ones? Yes. Why don't you tell us first about the one that we ate at tonight? So earlier tonight, the reason why, um, well, at least for me, I don't, I'm only going to speak for myself. The reason why I look a little, a little bloated, a little uh, full is because we just got back from eating at Husk Nashville. Ever heard of it? It's kind of one of the best restaurants in the city. And I'm not just saying that because I love it. Um, It's actually been mentioned in a lot of articles. And if you Google best restaurants in Nashville, it's one of the first restaurants that comes up if you're visiting or whatever. If you just want to go out and have some quality food, Um, it's really, really good Southern cuisine. So it's located in a super historic part of the city in a very historic Victorian home. And yes, it has a little bit of a reputation for being haunted, at least according to the staff. So Husk is located in downtown Nashville on Rutledge Hill, which is a very significant area in Nashville's history. Rutledge Hill is named after Henry Middleton Rutledge, and he was a local lawyer whose father was a delegate of South Carolina, and who happened to sign the Declaration of Independence. Henry Rutledge owned a lot of land in the area, so the street that Husk is located on is called Rutledge. 
And Husk is situated inside a house built by a prominent physician and minister named Dr. John Bunyan Stevens. And this house was built between 1879 and 1882. The mayor of Nashville named Richard Houston Dudley lived in the house when he was elected in 1897. So the house in which Husk is located is considered a historic landmark in the city. And with that are certain rules and regulations about what you can and cannot do in terms of building and things like that and what you can disturb on the property and what you can't. I found out a little bit about this when needing to go to the restroom. If you need to go to the restroom at Husk, there's two bathrooms and they are unisex and that's all you have access to. And you might find yourself having to wait in line. And so when waiting in line, I had to ask, are there any other bathrooms? And the answer is no, there aren't any other bathrooms because they are not allowed to add any additional bathrooms because of the historic status of the property. I, I say the whole thing about the bathroom really, like not only to tell you about the historic landmark status and the rules and regulations, but also while I was standing in line for the bathroom, I experienced something unsettling. What happened? You, you've you been holding out on me. What happened? So while I was standing in line for the bathroom, I felt on my left shoulder the weight of a hand. It wasn't aggressive. It wasn't forceful. It didn't like push me. It was just like a hand that like sort of rested, not on my shoulder, but a little bit lower, like maybe shoulder blade area. What? And yeah, I felt the weight of it and, and like definitely the the shape of it. And it wasn't somebody waiting to go use the pisser? No, there was no one behind me. I mean, I could feel that there was no one physically behind me. But yeah, I I did determine that there was no one behind me, but I felt it and it felt... It felt like something. It didn't scare me, though. That's weird. Well, what did our server say about the hauntings? She said something about a couple things that have happened at the restaurant. I wrote down some of the intel we were able to collect during our visit. And honestly, when it comes to Husk and the haunting, I just want to say, I want to preface all of this by saying, we really don't have a solid grasp on the origin of the haunting. We don't really know who the individual or individuals could be, who to attribute any of this activity to. These are just firsthand accounts from different staff members. And a lot of it is hearsay. But one thing about me, I believe women. So the general manager said that she heard a female voice saying her name. And this was sometime, I think, during closing up the restaurant or something, sometime late at night when she was running through, turning lights off and things like that. Actually, when we were talking to Anna tonight, she showed us, this is so unrelated to Husk Haunting, but Anna showed us photographic evidence of a ghost. Where was this located? It was at the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas, which I hope to cover sometime because that place is super haunted but it was a bona fide ghost photo it was a photo and there was an apparition present in the photo and you can't say that it wasn't it was definitely not like a photoshop thing like for sure it wasn't okay <gasps> why am i so tired you've been going every which way doing all the things you've been to that you've been to that storage unit at least 37 times in just four days <laughs> I've been up from husk till dawn, I fear. Oh, my gosh. We love a pun. We love a pun. So Anna showed us the picture of the woman apparition that her friend took at the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas. Yeah, that was really cool. Definitely, if you do end up covering that, let me know. I know we don't usually like to tell each other what we're going to cover, but we do have, spoiler alert, a format shift coming up. For you in future episodes so we might be we might be straying from that a little bit so when you decide you want to do the Driscoll Hotel story let me know and I'll try to reach out to Anna because she just showed it to us tonight but maybe she'll send it to us so we can 
show it on the podcast and of course credit her and her friend who took the photo when we do the Driscoll Hotel. Yeah, because like we basically we were eating a delicious meal, which we can talk about at some point. And Anna says, Anna says, as we're leaving, she's like, can you stay a little while? I got to show you something. But yeah, that was crazy. It was a bona fide, bona fide ghost. 100 percent. Yeah. Dare I say I was shook to see that. Mm -hmm. And that had nothing to do with Husk being haunted. But that was still some haunted hospitality. It was. Uh, So I have some more Husk haunting hearsay (laughs) for you guys. Another member of management named Carol. She is the Husk sommelier. Very, very talented. She shared with us that a previous member of management by the name of Katrina really seems to have had the most experiences with activity in the space. So Katrina seems to have witnessed a bottle of hot sauce flying off of a shelf in the server alley. What? Another thing that Katrina has reported about husk so husk being in a house there's a whole lot of different nooks and crannies there's a patio downstairs there's a bar downstairs there's a dining room downstairs upstairs there's a dining room there's a porch and there's also a porch so it's really cool lots of different vibes to be had one of the downstairs dining rooms katrina says there is a table Number 41. For her, that is the most haunted spot in the restaurant, quite possibly. She considers that table to be cursed. Tell us more about this curse. It's very, it's a little vague, but she believes that something sinister is buried underneath table 41. Or that something horrible happened in that spot once upon a time. I'm not exactly sure why she feels that way. I don't know if it's like a weird temperature change in that spot or if she's experienced particularly foul encounters with people in that spot. I'm not really sure. There have also been some reports from servers and management of seeing, they described it as a demonic entity, uh, seeing this demonic entity in a back hallway. And this hallway is the same area where I was standing in line waiting for the bathroom and just to paint a picture for you this same hallway also leads to a staircase that leads down to what staff members call the cave which is basically an underground storage area that probably used to be a cellar of some sort back in the day but it is blocked by this big curio cabinet type structure that contains a bunch of really cool bourbon bottles. So I'm wondering if maybe like that is all connected, like down into the cave. It is kind of a creepy spot right there. Okay, so this was, you know, our first time eating there and I didn't have anybody touch me or anything touch me, but I did get weird vibes. I got a little bit of the heebie-jeebies because I saw that little area where you can look through the glass and I was like, what's back there? Just the whole lighting back there is very like ominous. Yeah. And it is very obvious that, I mean, that is a doorway. That's a whole doorway right there. And there's just a big cabinet just blocking the entrance to the staircase that leads down. I'm so curious about that staircase. You think they would let us explore overnight? Overnight? (sighs) What kind of strings would we need to pull? (laughs) I don't know if they would let us explore overnight, but they might let us do an actual investigation in there. Stay tuned on that because I do want to follow up with, well, we need to follow up with Anna, anyway, about that incriminating photo. Oh, I have something. Remember, who was it that came by? Kristen, I think was her name. She said something about how another server had gone to New Orleans and had brought a bag of beans to, like, cleanse or protect you from spirits or something. And the bag was stowed up somewhere in the restaurant. It fell off the wall or something. Did I get that right? Yeah. So a server named Kristen came by our table right before we got up 
and she she mentioned Katrina as well. Uh, Katrina has been mentioned a lot in a lot of these anecdotes. Allegedly, Katrina is someone who's very spiritually connected. If that's the case, then I guess it makes sense that she has all these stories. Katrina was gifted the bag of coffee beans, and it was spiritually supposed to be a protection. But then she hung it up on a wall, maybe near that demon room or something. Yeah, it was supposed to be a protection ward, I believe, is what it seems like Kristen was saying. But yeah, Kristen said that the bag fell at one point and really spooked everybody. So I don't know what happened with the beans at that point. I don't know if they were disposed of in a certain way or I don't know. What do you do? Hopefully somebody will spill those beans at some point because I need to know. Somebody spill the beans. (laughs) What do you do when a protection ward seems to be spiritually tampered with that's something tell us if you're if you're very like spiritually inclined what what happens when it seems like a protection ward has been spiritually tampered with do you dispose of it in a certain way do you just put it back up on the the doorway that you had it on or wherever you had it on I mean I typically if I'm doing a protection ward I'm going to put it on the top of a doorway but like I don't know. Everybody does things differently yeah. um, in that regard. So please share if you have any information on what to do with a tampered with protection ward. Cause I'm like really fixated on that right now. We need to know. We need answers. We need answers. But yeah, so that's kind of the extent of my husk haunting information. Um, and this is, this seems to be an ongoing haunting. I mean, this seems to be something where people are just having experiences here and there as time goes on. I mean, like I said, I felt that hand today. Something's afoot over there. And and that's another thing, like to wrap this up, um, since we really don't have a solid story, we don't know who to attribute any of this activity to or any of this hearsay or whatever. Was it someone who used to work in the house? Could be a member of the house's original staff. It could be the mayor, Dudley. It could be the doctor who built the house. It really could be a number of different souls who have imprinted on the location at some point in history. And it could even be recent. It could be way more recent than the 1800s. Who knows? But if anyone does have any particular additional tea on hauntings happening at Husk Nashville or Husk Charleston or Husk Savannah even, because Lord knows Husk Savannah is haunted. It's got to be. I actually heard it was. I don't remember where I heard it, but when you told me that this is the restaurant we were going to and that you wanted to cover Husk, I was like, wait, there's one in Savannah, and I've heard through the grapevine because I go down there a lot that that one's haunted. And speaking of Savannah, guess what, Santa? What? The haunted restaurant that had me shook this week is also in Savannah. Oh, my God. Well, RIP. So the bar and restaurant that I'm covering is actually, as of this past June, it's gone. It's it's not it's not a bar or restaurant anymore. You guys probably guessed it by now, but it's Moon River Brewing Company. And this place is super famous. It's no longer going to be a brewery, but there's talks of it becoming another hospitality entity. More on that whenever that news comes out. But this is a place in Savannah that I have eaten at before. And I, too, I didn't have, like, a actual paranormal experience, but... I did find it funny that it was the dead of summer and we were nowhere near event and I was freezing. Like that was kind of weird. It wasn't anything like being touched on the back or anything like that. But yeah, so Moon River Brewing Company is in the heart of Savannah, Georgia. Very, very haunted city. As you know, we've covered a couple different places from Savannah before. But basically in 1864, this place started out as the City Hotel. A laser early and his wife, they commissioned the project. Pretty much a luxury hotel where all of the the rich folk of Savannah would come to hang out and then any travelers would come to stay. It shut down as a hotel in 1864. 
um, not too long before General Sherman busted into Savannah and kind of just like took over that stuff. After the hotel was closed, the building became a hospital. And as you may or may not know, the yellow fever went rampant through Savannah and hundreds, maybe even thousands of people died. Most of them were children or immunocompromised people. When the hotel became a hospital and all of these children passed away, obviously their spirits probably got left behind. That's just one of several spirits that is said to linger in Moon River Brewing Company. In 1832, there was this nuisance of a fella, and his name was James Stark. He was a guy who was basically always belligerently drunk and rude, and nobody liked him. Like, literally no one. He was mean. He was a bully, and one day, not to quote Chicago, but he had it coming. Something happened to this guy right here. One day, this fella, he had a drunken altercation with the wrong person, a doctor, a doctor named Dr. Philip Minus. Or it could be Minus, but I think it's Minus. Dr. Philip Minus said, okay, that's enough, and he did that in the form of whipping out his pistol and shooting him. He he, he shot him dead, Okay. And basically what happened was Dr. Minus, he claimed that it was self-defense and that the reason that he pulled out his gun was because he literally saw this guy pull out his gun first. Doctor got acquitted. He got acquitted because one thing about Savannah is they didn't need this jerk rambling his mouth, talking crap to everybody, being mean, but they did need a doctor. <laughs> they did is need a doctor. A doctor now? Is like... there a doctor Is there a doctor? Yeah, so this Stark fella, he's one of the people that they say may haunt this place. I just thought it was interesting that because the town had such an unpopular opinion of this man, they were like, okay, we'll give you a free pass. I mean, it's not like they had CCTV back then or anything, obviously. They couldn't, like, verify that it was self-defense. Um, maybe they could. I don't know. But they were very quick to pass judgment and say, yeah, obviously Stark was the bad guy. And we're going to need – actually, can you stitch this up for me, Doc? Please don't go to jail. I need help. I need an adult. I need a doctor. Um, so that happened. And he's Stark is supposed to be one of the ghosts now. Fast back forward to 1860 when the tensions are super high all around America, politically speaking. Here comes this Yankee fella named James Sinclair. Needless to say, the Civil War is just around the corner, and he's ruffling some feathers. People don't like him because he ain't from around here. They beat the crap out of him nearly to death. Um, Based on what I read, it doesn't seem like he actually passed away, but that kind of violent behavior fueled a lot of what is now negative energy and things that have occurred throughout the restaurant. It was a violent place of revenge, violence, and then sadly death from yellow fever and other ailments and things like that. So in addition to James Stark and the children's spirits that are thought to be in this building, which by the way is several floors and every floor they say has different entities haunting it. I think the top two floors are the ones that have the most activity. One of the ghosts in addition to those two is the lady in white. And I read in one of my sources that some say that she will like push people down the stairs. Yeah, I would not want to encounter her. Um, People hear children spirits, which who knows if they're really children or something else. But then there's also a ghost that goes by Toby and he's thought to be a more like mischievous spirit. And the way that these these hauntings manifest at Moon River Brewing when it was still open was people would see like all kinds of crazy like shadows And when I was there with Connolly a few years ago, our server said that people would report at the bar, like, seeing glasses, like, fly off of the bar. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, And he was just one person to report that. So, Toby, the mischievous spirit, I personally don't even know if he's, like, a good spirit. I think he might be demonic in nature based on some of the things that I've read trying to see if I can find anything else. Oh, Toby, he's in the basement, if I'm not mistaken. Um, This is pulled from nightlyspirits.com. Toby, quote unquote, is known to brush up against people playing with the billiards or getting frustrated and will push people. So like, that's not, that's not something that I would do if I were a ghost. I don't think that's very nice. It's the main floor of the brewery where they say Mr. Stark's ghost was. On the third floor of Moon River Brewery, There is a woman in white that I mentioned. She's the one that has been seen several. She's been seen several times by lots of different people. Um, And sometimes they refer to her as Miss Johnson. So I will say that because it's such an old building from the 1800s that 
there's got to be construction done from time to time. And we all know what construction does to a building. It disrupts the entities. The entities. Allegedly, the hearsay is that there have been construction crews that would just leave. Like, I'm not going in there again. Well, you know how I sat on the third floor, this lady in white? Lady in white. Um, she, she pushed a woman down the stairs, allegedly. A woman who was married to the foreman doing the construction on the property. This was in the 1990s. So, yeah, enough about the lady in white. Um, and also, I had to go on TikTok. You know me. I had to go on TikTok. The original video was posted by Unearthly USA. And user DKMT said on July 7th, sadly, it closed a few weeks ago. And DKMT told the people of TikTok, yeah, apparently developers bought it and they're going to make it into a hotel again or something. But that's the rumor, at least. So I think it's interesting that it might wind up back in its original form, which was also hospitality, a hotel. And who knows what it's going to be, but I guarantee you that once once they start getting in there with the construction again, if I had to bet money on it, it's going to disrupt whatever spirits are lurking in there. Last time I went to Savannah, we didn't go by there, I don't think, but I didn't know it was shut down permanently, and it had only shut down permanently like the month prior last time I went to Savannah, so I'm like, but, but what? Because I only got to eat there once, and the burger that I had was pretty dang good, so... At least that's what I think I had. I don't remember. All the food in Savannah is so good. It's so good. If you guys like to eat, go to Savannah, Georgia. They've got the best food. But I'm going to go to Husk Savannah. I think we should. And then we got to go to Charleston. I haven't been to Charleston in like 10 yeah, years. Yeah, I want to I go to all the Husk locations now. Those are pretty much our stories about the hauntings. And what did you say earlier? That you would be haunted by the flavors? <laughs> Yeah, when we were at Husk, I was like, I just know I'm going to be haunted by these flavors later. And I have to say that I am I am still haunted by how good that was. And like, I don't understand how I'm hungry for more food right now because we were so full when we left. We were so full we couldn't eat any more and yet we still had dessert. All right. But one thing I wanted to touch on, Santa, before we hang up this episode of Shook paranormal podcast is talk about server nightmares that we've had like either like real instances that were were nightmares obviously without naming the people involved or the restaurant involved but also physical like recurring nightmares because I haven't been in the industry in several years but it took a few years for me to stop having nightmares about certain instances at the restaurant (laughs) can you think of anything Okay, so one thing that plagues me on a regular basis as an existing, I work in the industry, so one thing that has always plagued me and continues to is I will hear phantom hands, runners please, service, like different expo phrases. Yep. Um, I will hear like in my sleep in my regular life when I'm not at work, it's almost like if you're hypnotized and you hear like a specific sound that's supposed to like awaken you out of the hypnotic state yes. or, or the sound that's supposed to put you into the hypnotic state. It's like this trigger. Yep. It, it always gets me. Gosh, speaking of industry slang, 86 Moon River Brewing, I guess. Santa, can I tell you real quick the nastiest thing that ever happened to me when I was on the job? So we were talking about how you need to wear non-slip shoes when you're in the industry, (laughs) especially when you work in a place with like slick flooring, which is a lot of restaurants, actually. I had these shoes that had seen just one too many two laps. You know what I'm saying? Like they were the Dr. Scholl's black, plain shoes, waterproof that had basically started to come unhinged at the seam, okay? It started to gape. And during the end of my, I think it was my brunch shift one day, I had a double. And I was working at this place in East Cobb. My shoe, I almost tripped over it. It, The flap unflapped altogether to where my foot was like basically hanging out of the shoe. And I had to tape it up. Well, basically my shoe's talking to me at this point. It's like, the sole and the top of the shoe were clapping. I go into the lock-in and my side work, my closing side work was to like switch out the condiment bottles and like make sure everything was fresh. And we had all of our fresh condiments in these basically like they were vats. They were handmade 
like delicious, like homemade sauces, but they were all very creamy, very rich. One of them was blue cheese. And we know how I feel about blue cheese. Okay. You see where this is going. I grabbed the vat of blue cheese dressing and I slip and it falls all over my gaping open shoe. I am walking on blue cheese dressing. It was so nasty. Disgusting. And so I had to get, I don't know how I made it to this, the shoe store between shifts without causing a scene because it was nasty. It was nasty. I would have requested somebody carry me out of I that don't situation. Know, I don't know how I did it. I think I like ran my shoes under the water and like took my sock off. I don't know what I did, but I eventually went and got me some new Skechers. Ever heard of it? And they were actually the comfiest non-slip shoes I'd ever had. But anyway, that was disgusting. But like in terms of actual server nightmares for years, I kept having the same dream that no matter what I did, I could not get the drinks out. And we're talking like the sodas. That was just the dream that I had over and over again, literally for years after I quit. And also, did you notice that our pumpkins just passed away behind us? These jack-o'-lanterns behind us, if you're watching on the YouTube cut, have just been slowly descending into hell back there. Yes. Descending into madness. No, they're descending into hell. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, should we wrap this ship up? Yeah, I got a lot of media to contend with here, so I got to reckon with this later. (laughs) I forgot about that. I'm going to have to reckon with this later, okay? Yeah, I'm going to have to really reckon with this later. Anyways, we hope everybody is having a wonderful spooky season so far. If you have any restaurants you want us to uh, try out, haunted or not, let us know. But we're going to leave you with this, and then we're going to ask you to stay shook until the next one, okay? Before we forget, this comes from our listener, Chantel, who was on our YouTube live stream last night, Shocktober Live, and she sent us this message on TikTok saying, hey guys, my mom got a job at Pizza Hut, and it was haunted by a little boy in the back. We don't know who he was or anything like that, but he was very active, and he would run around the restaurant and knock things over. One time, she actually saw him running around and heard him giggling from the back, The giggling is usual, but that was her first time seeing him, and I think it's extremely creepy, and I would run away so fast, but my mom's an absolute badass, and she finished her job. Honestly, 10 out of 10. Chantel said, I have so much more stuff to tell you guys about my hometown and the haunted, extremely cursed family that I have. I'm sorry it's a super short message, but I have longer ones, and I'll ask the rest of my family for their ghost stories. And... She sent some really sweet stuff after that that I'll keep private, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for being part of our little Shook family. We had a great time last night, and we can't wait to hang out again. Thank you, Chantel, for sending us that, and it sounds like you got some more locked and loaded, so Chantel... Send us some more of your stories. For those of you who want to send a Shook story in, just like Chantel did, send it. You can do a TikTok message like Chantel did. You can send it in our Instagram DMs. You can send it to shookparanormalpod at gmail.com. You can go to shookpodcast.com and fill out the contact form. Or you can even do it in the YouTube video comments on any of our past YouTube videos. Or you could send us a telepathic message if that's your thing. But I will say, I'm most likely to see it in the email, but we'll take it any way you can send it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I have something so spooky to tell you. Oh my God. Is this a cliffhanger? Yeah, I think I'm going to save it for the next episode, actually, because it's kind of my own little personal shook story anecdote, and it's very, very, very short. So yeah, I think I'm going to send it in the next episode. Oh, snap. Okay. Love you guys. Stay shook. Stay shook and have a very happy shock tube. Shock tube. Thank you so much for tuning into Shook. New episodes of Shook drop every other Wednesday on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you love to listen to your favorite podcasts. For more information on today's episode, please check out our show notes. And until next time, stay shook. Do you have a personal paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? If so, visit our website at shookpodcast.com and fill out our contact form. Or send us an email at shookparanormalpod at gmail.com. And one last thing, friends. Shook is a 100% independently produced podcast. So please consider supporting our show by either leaving a review or contributing to our Patreon page. 
You can find that at patreon.com slash shook podcast.